Welcome back to Life and Living. My next guests are here to explain how art can help kids cope with trauma and other emotional issues. They are Dr. Marie Wilson, professor of psychology and counseling at Caldwell University, and Diane Caroga, board certified art therapy counselor, also uh, started at Caldwell University, right? Yes, I did. Welcome to the program, both of you. <laughs> Thank Dr. you. Dr. Wilson, I'm going to start with you. What is art therapy? Well, art therapy is a mental health profession where the art therapist engages clients uh, in helping them work through any kind of issues or concerns or feelings using the art process and art materials. How does art help somebody cope with their feelings? How does it help them express their feelings? Well, it's nonverbal and, you know, depending on the client that you're working with, it can access uh, information that maybe is uh, stored in areas of the brain. For instance, folks with PTSD, many times the attentional areas of the brain get shut down as uh, uh, owing to the trauma that they've experienced. As and a coping mechanism. Correct. And so what we've noticed is that art is able to access areas of the brain that are healthy and that want to communicate and bypasses some of the areas that are not functioning as well. Diane, you work right now at a Head Start program. I do. I work for the East Orange Early Head Start and Head Start program, so ages zero to five. So these are young kids. Are you dealing with kids who have dealt with trauma in their lives? Absolutely. We're dealing with kids from all different walks of life and cultures, but some of them absolutely have dealt with traumas Such and as? abuse, um, domestic abuse, substance abuse, coming from broken homes, um, you know, all types of unfortunate situations and traumatic events. How do you use the art with these kids? You know, Dr. Wilson just said that it, it taps into mm -hmm. a part sure. of the brain, um, but these kids may not be able to express themselves in the way an adult could or mm -hmm. even have the kind of memory that an adult Absolutely. could. Absolutely. So well, how is it on an age-appropriate level? Well, the art making definitely taps into um, natural tendencies for children anyway, so it tends to be a really great okay. fit just because it's already something that kids naturally like to do. So when we're talking about art making and um, expressing our feelings, a lot of times kids can come in and, and draw something that may look like a scribble, which tells us developmentally where they are, but what they have to say and the stories that they tell means so much more than that and can be very, very powerful. Do um, you need to be delicate in the way that you kind of interpret the art or, or read the art, so to speak, where you know that the art is telling you that this child is ready to open up? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I kind of let the, the child take the lead. You know, I don't want to probe too much because just like Marie talked a little bit about trauma, you know, we're trained, we know not to go too far. We don't ever want to re-trigger that trauma or go to a place that they're not ready to go to yet. That can emotionally, you know, yeah. do the opposite absolutely. of what you're looking absolutely. to do. Mm -hmm. So this program at Caldwell mm -hmm. is interesting because first I think we should give some context. Governor Christie just recently signed the Art Therapy Licensing Bill. Correct. Right? Yes. So yes. explain yes. what we're that very is. Excited. Well, I'm going to let Diane okay. was, uh, <laughs> take it away, Diane. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'm right now. I'm secretary on the NJ Art Therapy Association okay. Board. It's something that the board's been working on for probably about five years or a little bit longer than that, um, coming up with the bill. And just this past month in January, Governor Christie signed the bill into law. We're very excited about this because what this means is to practice art therapy in our state, you need to have a license. That means you're credentialed, you're trained. It protects the public. Um, it means that hopefully that'll help us work towards insurance reimbursement and title protection. So you have to be licensed to practice in our state. And speaking of getting licensed, what's interesting is that Caldwell University is an accredited program, right? So what does that mean? Well, we're approved by the American Art Therapy Association, and that's been standing since 06. But in the last two years, we've also become accredited by KCREP, which is a um, considered the golden standard in accreditation for counseling programs. We're the only one in the country that has met that standard, so we're very proud of that. So, and what does that mean for your graduating students? Well, it means that it's a, uh, they come out duly trained to be mental health counselors and eligible for the licensed professional counselor license uh, in the state. And it's also uh, portable. They can go to any state in the country with that as well and become licensed as counselors. And in addition, can become board certified art therapists with uh, because we train them in both of those modalities, so they're able. So there's areas where it's distinct. They do counseling or art therapy, but there are many places, um, such as where Diane works and the kind of work that I do, where we integrate those two modalities. And Diane, you came through the program. I did. Right, got right into yeah. into the work. And, I got right and into teaches the work. for us. And I, yeah. Yeah. I do. Okay, explain yeah. that. I do. I yeah. now teach for the program. Um, well, a while ago, I started working with kids, special needs children, and I just found that, um, just like we talked about before, they don't really necessarily have the language to communicate all the time. So using the art as a means for communication and a vehicle to really express themselves is what works for some of these kids. 
So after working at a summer camp, I found the Caldwell program. I said, this is great. This is perfect. Um, I met Marie, and the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the dynamic duo right here. Yeah, we're very proud of her. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What have you seen from this, the young people who you've helped in terms of their ability to work through some really tough life issues? Sure. Well, they're, it's amazing because kids are just so resilient. Um, and that's my specialty. I mean, this goes along with every age, and art therapy mm -hmm. really is for everyone. But what I've seen is, is that they're able to come in from this place that's, that might be very dark, where they've experienced something very dark, and they're able to um, start expressing themselves and healing through the art and talking about it. And in time, you know, and at their pace, they're, they're just slowly healing, and we're able to bring them to a place where um, you know, they can start to have a sense of control in their lives. They can really build their self-esteem back up and they can feel Building much better. Building social skills Social as well. skills, <laughs> problem solving. Um, I mean, there's just so many things that we're able to provide through the art making and in individual or group sessions. I can't thank you both enough for talking about this program. Thank I think you. it's absolutely terrific. Dr. Marie Wilson and Diane Caroga. Thank you so much, and, and thank you, thank thank you. you for it's been great. the work that you're doing helping the next generation of young people who I know otherwise uh, would not be able to deal in quite the way that they are. Thank you for helping thank us spread the us. word. Life and Living has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and NJTV. Funding for this edition of Life and Living with Joanna Gagas has been provided by Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey, Wells Fargo, PSE&G, MagnaCare, Cone Resnick, the Mental Health Association in New Jersey, and by Partners for Health Foundation. Life and Living with Joanna Gagas has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.